Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera, and Doug Silver sorting nuts and bolts, and we are on air. I'm on my hands and knees, and I aim to please Jolene. <laughs> what, Doug? Anyway, <laughs> anyways, we got a. I can see as I'm looking the car over um, where the the restoration or the the restoration has stopped, uh, and it's on this side of the car. Most of the other side, the driver's side, has been completed, and on this side, as I get looking looking it over, um, this is where it ended. This is where it all kind of went sour, and things got stopped and held up. Um, you can see underneath the car, it's all painted black and all that stuff looks real good, but they're working their way back. This just had a little bit of primer on it. But you can see they cut out a, I would say they called an outrigger off the edge of the frame. The frame's good, just the outrigger looks like it's gone, obviously. I'm going to fix that right in front of your very eyes. It's kind of an odd looking shape at the basic moment, but I'm going to make it easy. Uh, we have a few things that we're probably going to show underneath here as I get going. Uh, if we want to come to the other side, and I'll only one. Uh, you come to the other side this one is good other than it has a couple little pinholes right right there and um, I'm going to take a coat hanger and fill them pinholes full so it's completed um, basically you could rub a little seam sealer on that I don't think that right there is a bunch of uh, integrity but it is some that holds on the outside of the trunk floor I would say it's made out of 18 gauge or 20 gauge it's not nothing that's real real thick like the chassis would be you can tell by the metal as we look up in there you can see on the edge where it's nailed down to the front uh, the floor it's not really that thick so we're just going to use 18 gauge to fix it just like they did yesterday we did so that's what we're going to be doing on this video. Yesterday we fixed the underneath of the hood. And if I get that done in a reasonable amount of time and we're not, time's not up, uh, we'll do maybe a little to the outside of this hood. I'll show you a trick how I'm going to fix some stuff in the front. I've showed you before, but I got the edge all welded and ground and cleaned. Looking good. Uh, Doug is basically taking all the nuts and bolts and screws and trying to basically like a grade four, grade five game, trying to put all them with each other. So all the screws that are same he's putting together, all the bolts that are same he's putting together, and he's finding out, oh, that's pretty. He's got the dash going together. It's looking very dashing. Um, got the radio in it. Got the gauges started in it. Uh, got the glove box put in it. Uh, Doug was saying earlier, I can't find the glove box. And I said, that's that cardboard thing that looks like a piece of, <laughs> piece of dirt <laughs> that goes underneath that. So he yeah. ended up putting that in. Um, he got out, he got figured out how to uh, put the win the wipers in. I was saying to Jolene this morning, I'm glad it was him because it wouldn't be me. Um, just going through that book and figuring out how them cables run and, and getting that back in shape. Um, he's got the wipers hooked up back up in it. Uh, he's got a few things hooked up in the front, all the steering hooked back up. Uh, the, the hinges for the hood, so we're going to have to try the hood on to see if this fits fairly decent. Uh, I know that the length is right. I just don't know if the shape is exactly right on the outside. Where I've got it welded up pretty good, I can hammer and dolly it a little bit to make it fit the front. Uh, but we're going to do this on this car right now. We're going to do the best we can with a short amount of time. I've got myself a piece of paper, a marker. I want to thank everybody for coming back. So I'm on my hands and knees. Uh, we're going to fix this. Uh, uh, what I'm looking at there, when you look at that, uh, don't let it scare you. It doesn't scare me. And the reason being is, is I see two shapes. I see this shape here, this shape right there, that flat shape that comes around like that, and I see this shape. So this is what I'm going to do. Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. I get a piece going in there like so. And I'm just going how wide it is up here. Now, I was looking for a little 90 bend there, but it does not have that. It just comes right down there, walls on that. Just going to take a look at the other side. That's what it does. <laughs> just going to bring a piece straight down around. Walt it right along here, right along there, and then we'll face it. So let's cut this piece out. We'll trace this on a piece of metal. Uh, 
I just marked it where I thought it might go the best. Just gonna, so my back drum, I'm just gonna straighten it out with my scissors. I'm allowed to do that, and you are too. Just because it's not drawn the greatest doesn't mean that has to be the pattern. You can straighten it as you, out as you go. I'm just gonna slide that up in there. Is it long enough? And is it? I need to make it a little bit longer and a little bit thinner. Okay, I'm gonna slice it back just a little bit. So, no, I'm gonna run it just like that. Just like that. I'm not covered the hole where my thumb is. It's a, there's a little bit of a hole there. It probably needs another, I'll say, half an inch. We'll go up that far. And need, this needs a little be a little bit thinner. So we're gonna cut it off right now before we. If you hear any funny noises, I got a little bit of gas. <laughs> So I said it was probably half inch longer than that. We're just gonna go put that. For, I'm gonna give a little bit more than a half inch. Oh, doing the twist this morning. Let's go cut that piece out. Sharp. Like Jolene, sharp as a tack. I'll shove that in my back pocket and the reason being is I'll never find it. I like the pods I'll never really notice the the dash was that dashing with the pod sticking out at you you heard it from Doug the gauges look really nice in it it's fine Doug I don't want to slow you down buddy not even a little bit <laughs> you can see how he's doing it you can see how, yeah, it's overwhelming. See how he's got all the screws together and all the long screws, short screws, all the self-tapping screws, all the little tiny. Basically, has has to go away, has to go about doing it that way, and then try to find out where each thing goes. It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. And uh, Doug's doing a damn good job at it so far. I'll figure it out. It's going to take time. You heard it. He'll figure it out. It's just going to take time. Dog bell just went off. I'm gonna get a hammer. I'm just gonna. I haven't got my double primer in there. Straighten that out. We know it's got a little bend in it, so we might as well put a little bend in it before we even get down there. The quicker I get this done, the quicker I get on to something else. I'm a little wide. Well, not too much. Actually, what I think I'll do is I think I'll nail that on there. And then I'll scuff off the wideness of it. That's what I think I'm going to do. Well, no, I'm going to knock it off a little bit now. I'm going to take off a little tiny bit. It's too wide, so I'm just going to take a little bit off. And I'm just going to do it with my super magical duper eyes. Let's turn the welder on. We're basically at where we need to be at right at the present moment, I'm thinking, to get this one put on. I should clean off uh, where I'm gonna weld it so it'll weld half decent. Uh, we'll put that on. Hmm. 
shoot hook on no here, no problem. See what happens. Take my, clean it up just a little bit. I gotta get back up, turn that welder on. This is the stuff that gets people, you know? Um, the underneath stuff is a little harder to get because you're working on your back. And when you get good at stuff, or when you, I say when you get good at stuff, or when you, you know when you're getting good is when you can do um, just about anything in, in any place, if you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't matter if it's upside down or inside out or, You still get it done, that just, you know, tells you how good you are. Attack it right there. It's good. I need something to hammer here somewhere. See it? I got it. I got it, sweetheart. That looks good. Not as good as you, Jolene, but look good. Keep getting air bubbles. It's better to trigger stuff like this. The reason being is start trying to run beads underneath here. End up putting big holes and things. And uh, you probably won't be happy. That all looks good. Now we need to get up in here. I'm going to hold that up. Missed it. Nailed it. Hold that one tight. Alright. What's this here? Jolene's telling me I got a helmet on. I know that, sweetheart. I know I got a helmet on. I just trying to tag it on your fucking well it. <laughs> she got a helmet on, she did. I am welding up a little higher than what the piece is. So if I go to grind it off, I can feather the weld off. So I'm putting a little bit more weld on than I need to. I can weld right across the edge. But if I go to grind it off, it won't. It won't look that good, so if I put the weld up a little bit higher, then I can feather it off. Hope you understand that. So, the piece was down here, across. I just put a little more weld across the top there so I can feather it off. Okay, we got our piece welded in there. Got our piece welded on there, down along there, where it needs to be. I don't know if I'm going to try to get in there. If I try to get in there, I might try. To, I might make, make a little bit of a mess, but a little bit at a time, maybe. Nothing. 
nothing wrong with that. You know what I got to do now. Just got to face that bad boy. Just got to face it. So we're taking something that probably would, you know, you know, make somebody not that happy to fix and just trying to simplify it, make it easy. It's got two shapes. Generally, every time I try to make something, I try to find the shapes that it has and then try to make it come together. So if you try to make that in one piece, um, you probably would be not very happy. And the reason being is the time it takes. Yeah, you can sit over the bench if you want to and, and take a bunch of time. But uh, for me, just for me, I, I'd rather try to get done as quickly as possible. I'm going to try to hot weld that on there. I've got a little triangle right there that's not actually working, so I'm going to cut a little piece out of this so I can get it to fit the way I want it to. Move that back. I'm going to angle that down. piece that runs across here. Across there. Now I've got my line. go to work and cut a piece out and then we'll fix it. Piece of metal right over here. I'm gonna go to my straight edge. That's the place to go first if you can. Saves you in a cut. That's, that's all it does. Save it. That's all it does. Saves you a cut. And that right there was made for that piece. Get on my hands and knees for you, baby. Any day. I got my hat on. <laughs> got my hat on. She got she got your helmet on. She said. <laughs> the operating table, Doug's. Gonna take a hammer, flatten the roof. All right, I'm gonna turn the welder on because I know, or I think I know, it's gonna fit. One thing you, I can say. The person that was doing the car cut out the material that wasn't good. So I'm guessing that the rest of the work on the car was good. Nope, come on down. I'm thinking that.
One to hold it. So I'm gonna look it over now. I'm gonna see if it looks good. Alright, push that in. Tap that in. Bottom of it can be flapped off just a little tiny bit. So I'm just going to take and get it matched up nicely. Looking good. I'm going to tack it along the bottom, get the bottom fitting good, and then I'll go up on the top and I can. Just knock it out the top so it's... Alright, I'm just going to weld it up, I guess. Why not? Good. That can be flat, round, ground off really nice with the flapper wheel. Just tap this one tight at the top. Beautiful. I'm going to tack it every inch so it doesn't take off. If I start welding it here, if I don't tack it every inch, it'll take off. And then I'll have to get the hammer out again and go for it. But if I just tack it, When I weld it up, it won't take off. That's what I'm thinking. Just want to get this light back here or Taking that Fina saying that she wants to come in. We'll get her in a second. She'll love you for it, Doug. All right, let's go down around here. When it bubbles up on me, I just hit it with the welder again, try to lay the weld down. All right, there's our piece. Uh, we took all the complication out of it whatsoever. Um, I will probably just flap or wheel that off. Can you show that? What's that? Can you show that? Okay, I can do that. I'm just going to do that right now. Move the welder. We'll fix the other side. Stay with us. We'll fix the other side. Show how I'm going to do that. Move this. Move it my way. Hey.
I can take the die grinder and get in there. But that's basically what we went for is, is to do that. Um, to finish it off, I probably would seam seal it and, and be done with it. Uh, if you're doing a, I don't know, a 100 point restoration, uh, you, you basically would be, that would be obviously slam blasted and you would fill that out so you couldn't tell it was done. But, but that's a good start to filling it out. You've got metal in there, metal in there. Uh, the piece has been fixed and I can grind more off it, but I, re I really don't think it's necessary. Um, the car has been fixed. That's fixed. Now we're going to go to the other side. And on this side, um, it has a hole in it. Under here, it has a, a drain hole. So that's basically what should be done over here uh, to fool anybody or to, not to say fool, yes, to fool, to make it look like it hasn't been fixed. I could put a little bit of filler on that, uh, smooth it off, drill a hole up and through there. You would never know that anybody had touched that. Let's get a thing going here. Let's see if we can fix that. Um, it does have a little bit of rot going on there. Let's fix it. I'm going to get up and push the welder back. Yeah. Walk the ground on some results. Hopefully it works the same way here on this, this side as it did the other side. See what happens. Everybody probably didn't know I had fancy stuff like a welding blanket, did they? I didn't know either until I went looking for it. Alrighty, I'm gonna just stick that up in there. I think, hoping that's it metal in there let's fix that i get my head up in there no nope. let's do that to see myself. All right, I just gotta go back here and put a little more weld in it for when I'm grinding. A little bit right there. A little hole right there. Did I hit it? No, I missed it. Basically what I'm doing is I'm melting that coat hanger and letting that fall in that hole. And that's what's happened there. Take a flapper wheel. fixed. Don't want to grind it all off. Um, we know that it's, you know, it's thinning there. So for, it'd be foolish for me to go in there and grind that off just to, just so I think it, to make it look nice. 
I might as well leave the meat there, uh, clean it up a little bit, and then maybe I can put a little fiberglass filler on it or, or whatever if I want to hide it. It's the exact same thing as this. I can go in there and grind all that weld off. Yes, I can, but um, on this edge, I was happy to grind all the weld off, and the reason being is, is because I uh, butt welded it together there, and I flappered and wheeled it back so I know I had penetration. On up here, I mean, let's face it, I, I might as well uh, leave a little bit of weld there so I can do something with it. On both pieces, I feel like that's a quick fix. On both pieces, you can do the exact same thing as I just done. Just grab yourself a coat hanger, slide it up in there, melt, melt the coat hanger, and just let the, the, the weld fall inside. What time are we at? Alrighty, I've got the front of this hood. It has, uh, I fixed the underneath of it. <laughs> oh, I forgot all. Well, Doug, you know what? I'm so used to doing this video stuff by myself that. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to swap it over this way. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. I forgot all about that. Well, I, I wasn't thinking, you know, I was thinking about the, the holes in the front of the hood, is what I was thinking. You want to help me turn it around? If you will, please, Doug. Now, I have some holes in the front of the hood. Um, I'm not sure what anybody else would do with them. I've got metal, I've got metal underneath them now. There's good metal underneath there because I have uh, replaced the underneath of it. Um, I really don't want to cut pieces out of the hood and try to butt weld pieces in the hood. I just feel like it's really unnecessary and I feel like it's it would be a lot of work um, I'm gonna have to probably there's no warpage going on the front of the hood when we weld it upside down I'm feeling like on this edge um, the warpage probably would have the heat would have went out the end of the hood instead of going up in the hood but what I've got now is I've got one two three got a few long going along here a few a couple long going along there a couple there just kind of on the front of the hood it's very thin so i'm going to take the drill and the wheel i'm going to clean it up along the edge here and i'm feeling like it's probably thin in a few places but i'm going to try to drop some coat hanger in there and um, make you think wow i could do that and you can instead of you know coming along and um, cutting the front of your hood off it just seems like a not a great thing to great thing to do is cut the front of the hood. I'm going to be banging up on this bad boy. Doug has got the hinges on the front. Uh, it took him a little bit because he was looking in the back. He said, I, you know, "If you know what I'm saying, I mean, 1958, you were just an inspiration in your old man's eye. Jump from nut to nut, weren't you, Doug?" I'm still learning here, man. I'm still learning. You're not the only one. my honest opinion I feel that if you did not want to weld the holes up like I'm going to you could fiberglass that oil it from behind and I don't think you would ever have a problem and the reason being is the fiberglass would win on that metal in the back um, I just feel like it would be fine you know basically because I don't feel like the car is going to be in the weather a whole bunch you're not going to be driving it in 1958 till 1985 and trying to keep it on the road. Um, you're going to look after it. So I feel like if you if you was not comfortable with uh, welding the holes up or whatever, I feel fiberglass would last. Uh, have, 
it would last. I would just undercoat it from the inside. And I am going to do that when the car is completed. Same as that stuff underneath there. Go up in that little hole, shoot a little bit of crown in there, uh, undercoating, crown undercoating in that hole of that outrigger on that frame. Drill a hole on the other side and do a splash the, ax the other one the exact same way. And if you did not, you cannot expect it to last forever because when it was brand new, it didn't last forever. You can take a car nowadays and run it for four or five years and need new sills on it. That's how it goes. Nothing lasts forever when it comes to the automobile world unless you take precautions and, and look after it, like undercoat it, not drive it in the snow and the sleet and the rain. Alrighty, I've got a few holes in the front. I'm going to try to do the... I'm going to do the trick. I'm going to try to film full of coat hanger and see what happens. They might take off and become bigger than I want them to. They may. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coat hanger and, and heat the coat hanger up instead of the hood and let the coat hanger fall in the hole. Because it's very thin and it should fall in the hole, no problem. I'm going to grab the air hose because we're on top of the hood. When we're welding it like this, the heat's going to go this way. So I, I really don't want any distortion if possible. And when I weld it up and grind it off, I am not going to grind off all the weld. I'm going to grind it off so it's flush with the hood. We're down in there a little bit. You can see it's down in there. I'm not going to grind it off so it's, I'm taking it all off. That would be pointless because I'm going to thin something else out. Anyways, just do that right there for a second. Let's get my helmet on. Let's try it. Not saying it's going to work. Who knows? We've got the back side fixed. There should be some metal for it to hang on to. Let's get a coat hanger. What's that, sweetheart? Baby, you ground me, you know that? He said, you need your ground? You got that right, sweetheart. I need my ground. All right. I'm gonna put that right there. It's a fast, it'd be like John Wayne. Got a hole right here, let's, let's, let's try this one here. I'm gonna melt the coat hanger and let it fall in the hole. There's one. When I put the air to that, I am shrinking it. Lighting the coat hanger on fire and letting the fight fall in the hole. As you can see, I made a little hole beside it. Wish I had something to hold that. See, I made a little hole beside it. Got lots of meat there, so I'm just gonna try it without it. Feel like I got it. If you want to put it, you got you can you see it? If I tried to come in there and do that just with a welder. would not happen. It would not happen. Just gonna check it out.
I'm gonna melt the coat hanger and let it sit right on top of it. I'm actually bumping the welder to get a puddle of weld out of the coat hanger and then I let it fall in the hole. Beautiful. You are Joey, beautiful. Seems like a little bit of filler. No, oh, it is filler. And it's been hit with a hammer to get that hole, so we should be good around it. Beautiful. Oh, too quick. You get too quick on on the on the metal, and it's red. Well, that means you can blow away your your metal, obviously. Take a little pinhole here, maybe. I'm just going to hit it just for a little bit. Let's get away from that for a second. I'm on this side, a little pinhole here. I'm going to give you a hint. Try to do it without a coat hanger. <laughs> and you will have a mess. You need help, Doug? Nope. All righty. Uh, let's, let's get over and get in and fix these ones. Try to do it without a coat hanger. See what happens. And when I'm done, ask yourself how much time I've saved by not putting a piece in. <laughs> and, try, and, and, and ask yourself what it would look like after you did cut it out and put a piece in. I'm going to beat that down a little bit because it needs to be down a little bit. So there's all kinds of equations going on here as I'm fixing that hood. Um, it's a coat hanger. It's quick. It's fast. It's fairly simple stuff. you have to ask yourself if, if you cut it out and try to repair it with a with a with a you know cut it out and putting a piece in it what would it cost and how long would it take and would you mess up the hood all that sort of stuff I'm gonna to want to get comfortable here it's gonna get the air for a minute it's not done yet
kan ya Oke there in the middle it looks like Here, one of it. Let's get a, another coat hanger. Sorry, sweetheart. Had the helmet stuck on her on her uh, camera. Sorry, sweetheart. She said she'll forgive me this time. <laughs> Knock that off. Got a little hole. Let's get this one. Hole there, we'll get that. Nope, didn't keep the well. Good. Just come over here for a little bit and took the heat away from that. That's all. You understand? Let's hit that little. Alrighty, so I've repaired the front of the hood. I don't know how long it took, but I can tell you this. If you decided to cut that out and try to put a butt weld a piece in there and repair it, um, do whatever you want to do to it, try to repair it, trying to cut that piece out here and try to put a piece in there, what, what the hood would look like after you're done, how long would it take you, would you cut this piece out and put this piece in there? Would you cut this piece out and put it in there? Um, it would take a long time. I, I, on that repair, I think that repair was fast and simple. I think anybody can do that. I'm just holding the welder on top of the metal, hitting the coat hanger first. It's making a puddle, and then I can see it. it. It's laying out because the metal is so thin where the pinholes are that it's just kind of burying itself right in. It doesn't need much heat for that to take off and stick to it. Um, what else was I going to say? I also do feel like 
the fiberglass would work along there if you undercoat it. So if you if you have something like that and you want to fiberglass it, because you know I would I have I have an instance where you know where the job requires um, not it requires to be done quickly and get it over with. I fiberglass glass stuff like that, undercoat it from the inside. It's lasted probably still going today. Uh, you can also do it this way. Where I'm fixing it up, never someone's welded it all up, I'm also do the exact same thing. And we always say weld up all the holes, do all this, do that. So that's what I did. Um, now, when it comes time to grinding that off, be very delicate. I am not going to take a flapper wheel and flapper wheel that smooth. Not going to do that because you're just going to be into the exact same thing. You're going to take metal away from the surrounding area. If that's thin there, what is the metal around it? It's, it's probably um, thin also. And when we took it from the other side, you can see how it was a little bit um, pitted and it had some stress in, the, stress in the metal. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to take one of those off. Just going to do one of them for you. I'm going to take the zip cut. Not the flapper wheel, the zip cut. And you're going to do this. It's over. I'm not going to go any further than that. The reason being is I'm not, I don't want to take any metal away, any, I've, you know, I'm trying to put metal back. If you have any issues, if you if you have any issues with where you welded it, you think you think you if you think you see a pinhole or anything like that, well, that means you have to go back to the coat hanger again and plop a little more material on. And that is as far as I'm going with that. This hood, in the end, is going to need filler on the front of it, and the reason being is because I'm going to have to hit it with a hammer. I've welded it down underneath there. It's going to have to, you know, make a little filler to, to make it look really good. It's going to need some filler over here. It's going to need whatever. So I'm basically not scared to leave that a little bit. And then you take your That sounded like Doug just figured something out. And you take your drill and clean it off like that and, and then you skim that across there and then your hood is fixed. That basically might even want to be hit there where it's dark. All right everybody thanks a lot for coming back I appreciate it. Um, if you like what you saw throw in a good comment if you don't like what you saw you know what to do and um, thanks everybody for coming back we appreciate it. Like, share, comment, come back, subscribe, say hello to Doug hey. and Jolene, and have a great day.